Welcome to Friday Focus, March 3rd, 2017. So today I'm gonna to talk to you about some things we need to know how the business are changing, is the business changing over the next year. I'm gonna talk about profitability and cash flow. And we really kind of hyper-focused on revenue and everybody in the office kind of knows where our revenue numbers need to be. We really kind of focus on that. You know, we got to hit a certain number on Tuesday. We hit uh, a record for the year. And really, it was our second highest day ever in terms of production. We'd hit about $304,000 in production. And uh, the question is, you know, how profitable were we? Is it, you know, was, is it, you know, we have costs incurred in that. Would point, are we not profitable? Well, let's talk about profitability. Profitability is income. So we're buying 304000 minus expenses. And that's profit. Now, cash flow is something a little different. I'll talk about that later. Cash flow is uh, negatively affected by things you invest in, like uh, buying more equipment that, that uh, we have to expense that over a period of time. But we're going to stick with profit and loss right now, and then I'll teach you how to read a balance sheet. And what's going to happen over this next 30 days is that a month from now, you're going to have for your location, for your service, a profit and loss sheet that will produce either weekly or, or monthly. So you'll know, you know if you're make your, your location, your service is making money, where your expenses are at, what expenses maybe you're incurring that you should get rid of, what expenses that you're incurring that you should keep, maybe what expenses you should start in order to increase production, increase profitability. And I look over history, you know, we went from, you know, I started this business about 13 years ago, and it was me up until 2007, uh, just, just me by myself, and I knew all of our expenses. I knew them very well. So I, when somebody was maybe wasting something, and say, hey, you know, that cost $80, maybe don't throw it away. And staff would be aware of it, and they, they, they were aware by that nature. So in 2007, was the last year that you know, I worked by myself. I hired, Teresa started here in 2007, and uh, I think uh, Stephanie did too. So uh, in 2007, we did $9.8 million in revenue. And our profit was 5.2 million. So our profit margin was about 50%. In 2017, 10 years later, our revenue was 23 million, 500,000. And our profit margin was negative 650. And what the heck happened? Well, I, I, I was a little bit sloppy. I allowed uh, people to run that part of the business that weren't really that, that expert at it. And I was sort of like purposely staying away from the finance because I don't really like it uh, that much. I don't like it at all. And I always knew how to make money. Even when I was a kid, I never had to borrow money. I paid for medical school and anything just about working. And I knew if I did this work, I'd always have plenty of money. Never, never ran out, never had to borrow money. And when I ran the practice, as we got more complicated, I realized I couldn't really do that anymore. So I started, you know, creating bureaucracies. And over time, what happened is that there was more, more or less not an intentional, but a deliberate effort to shield the expenses from the people that were, you know, ordering the stuff or making decisions. And I'm realizing to get back to the founder's mentality where you knew the costs, I've got to be very deliberate and intentional, and that's what's going to happen. So you're going to know what things cost. You're going to know if a patient is profitable or not, or if your day was profitable or not. Everybody wants to be part of a profitable organization. So last year we lost money. To me, it was like a lesson, okay? And we're, in, we're not in trouble or anything like that. Nobody's coming to shut us down or anything, but we can't sustain continued losses. We've got to be profitable. And I made some changes in the past week that immediately makes us profitable this month, okay? Uh, I also had to loan the business a little bit of money, and that's okay. I accept that. But that's, that's pretty much done. We don't need to do that anymore. So it made some changes so we don't have to worry about that anymore. A few of the changes were things that, you know, that I could fix immediately. Some things will take a few months. Teaching you about profit and loss is going to take probably a little bit of time more than that, but over the period of the next year, you're going to understand profit and loss. You're going to understand if our business you know, makes sense. Maybe there's some things we shouldn't be doing. Maybe there's some things we should be doing more. We have things like when we started dermatology, we knew we'd take a loss in dermatology because it's a brand new service. We had to spend a lot of money bringing patients in. We had to hire the people before the revenue's in. But then over time, that should turn profitable. You know, right now we're doing the big book launch. We have an event Thursday night. This, I'm actually recording this on Thursday for Friday. But we spent, we estimate about 120 to 150 thousand dollars on it. That's including wages, lost production, the advertising, the we did some TV commercials. We, you know, built a lot of equipment. Out. This stuff costs a lot of money. But then we know our average patient acquisition costs, and if we get a certain number of new patients from it, it was a great deal. Okay, so that's the way the business works. We have different things that are built into a profit and loss sheet. Now I'll go over the biggies. 
A big expense is us, our wages. And when you have wages, there's a little tack on your wages of about 40%. So you get paid, and for every dollar we spend on wages, we spend 40 cents on things such as education, uh, health insurance, uh, the, uh, we have uh, insurance for uh, disability, we have workman's comp insurance, we have to pay the FICA and Social Security tax. Uh, so we have inherent costs, bonuses, so we have inherent costs. And what I don't want to touch on that is wages or your bonuses. I want to increase those. In fact, I want to create a profit sharing plan. That's why I first I teach you how do you make profit before we can give you parts of the profit. You got to learn how to make it and we got to make profits before you get it. But what can we do on this burden here to reduce it? Well, for example, when we do training, last year we spent over $900,000 on training. I thought it was four fifty, dollars it was $900,000, it doubled. And when we look at it, a lot of our cost was because we were not good at scheduling things. So we would wait till the last minute, buy a bunch of tickets at double the rate. If we were to book things a month in advance and say, if you don't book it by a month in advance, you ain't going, we would save 200000 a year, for example, right, $200,000. We look at things like the meals that we, that we put out to the office. We're throwing away about $50,000 in the meals a year. What about you guys ordering them for the next week? That way you know if Dr. George is buying a lunch, you don't have to have meals that day. There's other options. What are other big expenses to our practice? So this is about almost half of our cost is in human capital. It's in us, okay? What about supplies? That, that's a big part. Supplies are a big expense. And I was looking today at the uh, catheters on hand. Clarkson's got enough catheters to do laser, do endovenous ablations for the next year. You know, do we need to have that much cash sitting on our shelves versus you know at the factory? I had no idea how this happened, but we're they're carrying months and months supply. Not just Clarkson, like every office. So we're make, we're gonna do more just in time ordering. You know, you should do your inventory if you need supplies in the next two weeks, order them. But this two months to six months to a year supplying storing of supplies is ridiculous. Last year we threw away over a quarter million dollars of expired stuff. Quarter million dollars of stuff that expired, gone, okay, just thrown away. Those are things we can cut without having a negative impact on your life. I looked at marketing. Marketing, we can look at what works best, keep doing that, maybe do more of it. What works less, do, do, do less of it. So we're looking to cut some uh, expense on marketing without having a negative impact on patient flow. That being said, then we have our ability to say uh, what you can do individually to make the office more profitable. So let me give you an example. If a patient comes, I'm gonna use Botox example. I've been kind of practicing with the staff, see how they respond, Botox or laser or veins. Let me do, let's do a vein patient. We all know veins. So a vein patient comes in, our cost of acquisition, including the marketing portion of that, the call center portion, the call center person, if she's answering the phone or not, that hour is being consumed. Uh, the real estate that she's sitting in is being consumed. Then there's that labor burden we talked about earlier. That's the burden refers to the stuff that doesn't really directly affect labor, like the taxes and the insurance and everything. So let's say we get, we're at about $650 for a new patient. So a patient comes in, we've already got a $650 deficit. Now if you don't get a mapping done, and you, you can't same day map them, you schedule them out or something, that just stays as a negative 650. But what happens if you do a mapping on the patient? Okay, the mapping, we get a little bit of revenue generated, but now we've got to tie up a room for an hour, and we've got to pay a tech to go in there and do the ultrasound, and we've got to bill it out. And we might get about $300, but we're gonna incur another $200 in cost, because our rooms cost a certain amount per hour in just fixed overhead. So we've got $200 here for the consult, another $200 here for the room time and the staff time for getting the procedure done. Okay, so we're 650 plus 200, 850, minus 300, 550, plus 200, so we're at 850. Did I do that right? 650 plus 200, 850, minus 550, plus 200 expenses, 850, so we're at negative 850. Now, if you don't book the person into production, you just increase the loss from 650 to 850 because we tied up a room where we could have some other production going on. So if you do a mapping and don't book them for production, you're better off using that, late, that room to do another laser ablation. So if you do the mapping, don't book them, you're better off not doing the mapping. Okay, so now let's say we do get the mapping done and we do put them into production within a week. Now we have the potential to make some revenue. So for a uh, laser ablation or, or RF ablation, we get paid about $1,500. Our catheter cost, 
the RF costs, including the, the administration to order it, is about 350. And we're going to tie up the room again for another period of time. So we have another $200 in overhead costs. So we could take the 1500 minus 550, we're at 950 positive minus 850 negative. That means we're positive of $100. Get your second ablation, that's going to go up a little, little bit more. Next ablation, then the next ablation will go up about $900, and then their MFTs go up. However, that one patient that you let slip by from mapping to production, or the one that you went slip by from consult to no mapping, just sucked up the next patient's entire profit margin. Okay, so it makes it impossible. So if we're only doing 50% of people in the production, we're going to consistently lose money because we have such a high cost structure. Take a Botox patient. Let's go along the same lines. Botox patient comes in. They're a little cheaper. They're about 450. And then we have another $187 in room time. Our overhead's a little lower for the Botox side. So we're about, let's say, 630. 630 in negative. If you don't treat the Botox, you took a loss. If you do inject Botox, let's say you sell $500 of Botox, we're going to consume some additional time and resources to inject the Botox. We've got to pay the provider. Nobody's punching out to do it. We're going to suck up a little bit more room time, not a lot more. So let's give that $100 of additional expense. And let's say $250 for the cost of goods sold. So now we have $630 minus $500. We're at $130 minus $100 minus $250. So we're negative. Let's say $130. And I'm, I'm not going to really check my math, but it's, let's, I'll check it. 630 minus, uh, 630 negative, 730 negative, 830, 930, 9, 9, uh, uh, 80 minus 500. We're negative 450. So in change, we're negative if we do the Botox. If you don't reschedule a patient, that negative stays on the books as a loss. Okay, there's a negative say. So if you do a Botox injection today, we've lost money. There's so much cost involved in bringing the patient in. We've got to buy the Botox, and we've got to cover our overhead. Now, if you were to re rebook that patient, and they come in again, eventually, after two or three treatments, that patient becomes positive. So the patients that come here long term are all positive, profitable patients. The one that come in and just get one treatment we don't really schedule, we lost money on that one. We were better off not getting them in the office. But how can you really cut it down? What happens? if you take this patient and you talk to them about veins. Now veins starts out with a clean slate. They're just consuming room time and staff time, no marketing time. That person is profitable the day of the mapping. Okay? If it's a derm patient that becomes a vein patient, that patient is profitable the day, of the, map, the, the day of the mapping. If you have a vein patient that you send over to dermatology, that first dermatology visit is profit. The one we have to bring in from the outside, there's no profit, it's actually leaving a loss. So that's one way you can impact it. The other way you can impact it is by knowing your costs. I think you know, we have way too much supplies on here. We have about a million dollars of supplies sitting around in the office. We have about two months of most things, way too much. We're going to cut that down, get our supply chain better. Uh, a lot of waste that we're going, to, we're going to cut down. When you have more supplies, you tend to waste more. And also, I think just understanding the cost of things, you'll be able to figure out are these things that we really need. So that's the Friday focus. We're establishing people at each office that can start to learn how to read the spreadsheets. You don't have to be an expert in finance to read it. It's you know, your cost to be line itemed. Right now, we've built out some basic tools, and we're going to work with the offices to see if the assumptions were correct. Uh, but we'll have that by the end of the month. So good luck. I look forward to fixing that. Thank you.